It's this huge race series, so like Formula E or Formula One, it's this new version, fully electric, in the most extreme environments on the planet, and it's highlighting climate change, like the worst affected places of climate change. And essentially it's a race without a trace, but it's super exciting to watch, it's just crazy madness. They're just ragging these, and it's male and female drivers, ragging these massive electric SUVs through the desert or through the snow, and then actually doing some good on the ground. The next race is in Greenland, and we've actually donated solar panels and a battery to help power school, so we're doing something on the ground there as well. Morning, Julia. Good morning. What a day to be alive. Oh, isn't it stunning? It's amazing. So where are we and what is going on? So we're here in Kangaloosa, Greenland. Um, we can see the ice cap actually just in the distance there. Um, we are here for Extreme E's Arctic x uh, It's actually the first time Greenland has ever held an international sporting event. First time a motorsport event has been held in Greenland. So we're super privileged to be here. The sky, everything is clear today. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. And I think, yes, we're all feeling very, very lucky to be here. It is, it is an amazing setup, but what is Extreme E? It's a sport for purpose. Uh, it's electric off-road racing, um, which looks to really give a platform to climate change and uh, the ways that remote environments are being affected by the climate crisis. But to accelerate uh, or to showcase uh, electric racing technology, get people excited about this new form of mobility, um, just not, not just from a sporting perspective, but also about why it's so important for us to be thinking about moving to clean transport. And sport is an amazing vehicle to be able to push those messages. Um, on top of that, so we call them the four E's. Uh, Extreme E looks to promote environment, electrification, and also equality. So if you look around the paddock and you watch the racing, you'll notice that our teams are fully gender equal. Every team has a male and a female racing driver, which is completely new in motorsport. So essentially we're looking to kind of break down the boundaries uh, of traditional motorsport, do something very different and bring kind of younger, uh, more diverse audiences into this sport and use it to really highlight important climate issues. You guys are absolutely smashing it. Take a bow. Well Welcome to the Greenland Glacier. And this is Ulrich. Ulrich knows an awful lot about glaciers. Tell us a little bit about this one. Well, we are actually standing on the ice cap itself. It's encapsulated by two large glaciers. Actually, one of them is uh, the largest one in Greenland, which is over a kilometer thick. It's said that if uh, the ice cap in Greenland melts, the water rise, uh, level will rise with about seven meters. Yep, that's ice. What are you up to, Chris? So we're taking some samples of the ice and it's going to be sent back to the laboratory in Torino, in Italy. They're going to be studying as to why the ice has started to turn black. Because the problem with that is, as I'm sure you're aware, white reflects heat and black absorbs heat. And that's one of the big reasons why the ice caps are melting so quick. With being black, the colour is now starting to absorb that heat and, and melt, rather than reflecting um, all, of, all of those sun rays and everything back into the atmosphere. So this holds a key. Glacier that is retreating faster than I think the world would like it to do, which is significant because the more we lose these glaciers, the more our oceans will rise and the more cities and people who live on the coast will be at serious risk. The other thing we're seeing is how much the fires that are going across Sardinia and Siberia and northern California over the last few years are casting ash almost like a black cementy sand type material across the ice which uh, prevents it from reflecting the sun's rays and is causing what's called a feedback loop so the white of the snow and the ice caps bounce the sun's rays back into space which is good because it keeps the planet nice and cool Contributing to this research is important, and the fact that we're standing here as Extreme E, first ever race ever in Greenland, is a is a history in the making. So, 
order. I'm very proud to be a part of it and uh, very proud to be participating in the race as a, as a team safety. So it's amazing stuff and I'm blessed to be here. La journée des qualifications chez Extreme e au Groenland. Préparez-vous à un spectacle. Ça va commencer. Good morning from Greenland. Good morning, it's race day. How exciting. Of course, we're racing here, but the main thing is to showcase the electric technology in places in which climate change is having a massive effect. And nothing is more evident than the polar ice caps here in Greenland. So it's been an eye-opener experience and something incredible to see. Uh, and plus the racing has been very exciting also. Alejandro is very gifted on putting people to believe in a vision, in a project, uh, in a way that nobody else can. So he did that with Formula E, he created a series, everybody was saying, ah, it's never gonna work, everything is... Uh, nobody was going to take care of electric, electric racing never exists. And then it, for me it became a success. And then the evolution in a way, or at least a, 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 another way of being a little bit more evident with, uh, with, with extreme technologies was his idea to create Extreme E, which he managed to put this together and bring a great pool of drivers and teams and sponsors and people that believe in this as well and create this amazing experience and this amazing message that we are seeing here, in, uh, with, uh, with, especially in this third round in Greenland. I will show you the car because we are here, right, in front of the service. By the way, this is Oliver. I think you know him. Oh, hi, Oli. So this is Chispa. Chispa, what does Chispa mean? Uh, uh, spark. Sparky. 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 Yeah. So for the electric, as you all know. So this is the handbrake, hydraulic handbrake. You pull it, locks the, the wheels. So you can do handbrake turns. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And then, as you can see, this is a really cool system of the rear mirrors. So, this is a steering wheel, we can take it off so that it's easier to get in and out of the car. We never do that because we kind of fit. So we have the radio to talk to the team manager, the engineer, whatever, during the race. Then we have hyperdrive. We have hyperboost only for five seconds during the lap. And you can press it whatever you want. So it takes you like to 400 kilowatts. So it's pretty fast, but it's only four seconds. I wish it was cold that, but it is what it is. And we have the wipers, which is here because it's more comfortable on the on the steering instead of going here to the panel. And then we have the pit limiter. We have some areas where we have to go into 30 kilometers per hour. So imagine we arrive from 100, we need to brake, 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 press it, and then directly it goes down to 30, which is comfortable. So we have the mapping system. We can change maps. Uh, it just gives different power, basically. Traction. Like 40, and that means the car's off. Uh, 40 at the front and 60 at the back, or whatever, you can change it. Then you have balance, uh, multi, is the steering. Also, you can change the, the softness of the steering wheel. Because, like, for example, Ollie goes on three and I go on four, so it just depends what you like. Yeah, then you have the emergency button that it's in case of fire, you press it, and uh, how's it called? The extension system. Hopefully, we don't have to use it ever, but it's there. Um, so, yeah, pretty much that's it. Very easy, it just has two pedals because obviously it's electric, so you don't need a clutch. And what's the top speed? It's around about, I don't know, maybe on the straight line I do 170, something like that. It's fast on gravel, but it should be fast. <laughs> Great, and where are we at the moment and where are we racing? We are in Greenland, in the middle of nowhere, in this beautiful city that is called Kangalushwak. I still am working on my presentation. Very good.
again another very exciting race. Uh, it would have been great that they catch up at the same time. Sadly, Bennett had a, an electric problem at the end and stopped. Green has been a tough one for us. We knew it was going to be extreme, but this has been uh, yeah, very, very tough. We well, basically, that was like yeah, exciting racing, to be honest. But you know, this is racing, this is tough racing, and you have to send the elbows out, otherwise you are nowhere. So come back stronger. That's what it is, right? Extreme E is about racing in more ways than one. The race to finish first is one thing, but the race to the end is a race we don't want to win. But for the human race, we'd like to have as many laps around the sun as possible. Our planet is not in a good place. The actions of humankind is anything but kind and causing irreversible damage. It's time to put on the brakes. It's time to change our habits. It's time to wake up. If you're ready to be part of the solution, part of the cure, there are small steps you can take today and big statements that will have valuable knock-on effects. Simple things like eating plant-based food, saying no to single-use plastic, ditching poisonous fossil fuels. Walk more, waste less. The Extreme E electric SUV series does more than provide a new type of racing. It brings the excitement of motorsport together with the people that can spread vital awareness and inspire a transport revolution, while also highlighting environmental issues caused by our selfish actions. My Energy's vision is to enable every home and business to become energy independent, saving you money, saving the planet with smart tech and renewable solutions. We have the ability to destroy or save our planet. So, what's it going to be? That's a wrap. Next stop, Sardinia.